What's up guys, it's Ryan Norberg, and happy 2019. As you guys know, I haven't really posted in a while. Um, if you've been following me on my Instagram and on my Facebook, um, you would know that I was released from my previous racing team, and so I was just basically trying to find a sponsor and get 2019 planned out, and really didn't have much time to post in between that period. But we're back, I'm gonna try and stay consistent now and post some more consistent videos. Um, these videos are not sponsored, I don't get paid to post these videos, but when I do post these videos, I want to have a sponsor that is my primary sponsor in racing to be um, on the video. Primarily, my goal during the off season was to find a sponsor so that when I had it, I could post it in these videos and it, their logo could be in the, the corner of the video just as something that I give back to the teams and allow customers to get an idea of the kind of help that they're going to get when they come and race with the team that I'm a part of. And so right now I'm partnered with Rawlison Performance Group. Um, I spoke with Mike a bit in the off season and I'm really excited for what's to come. I already raced the first two races of the season. Um, I had the Scusa Winter Series um, and there was two rounds to that Saturday and Sunday. On Saturday we finished second and on Sunday we won the final. So you know there's not much more you could ask for out of that. I'm super excited to start working with Mike and the whole Rawlison Performance Group team. Hopefully we can get some consistent videos out. Um, so yeah, let's get started with the video. So driving technique basically boils down into three things. There's braking, turn in, and acceleration. For me, the most important one is the braking. Uh, braking kind of sets up everything as you go into the corner. If you brake too deep, if you brake too early, if you're just inconsistent in the brakes, everything is gonna change. Your turn in's gonna change, your acceleration is gonna change. If you're consistent with the brakes and hit the brakes the same spot or try and get as consistent as possible, you are gonna have a more successful rolling speed through the center of the corner, the chassis is gonna handle correctly, and everything just kinda starts to work better when you're consistent on the brakes. So what I'm gonna show you today is just how I maximize my efficiency in the braking zone and how I brake to be more consistent. So the video that I'm pulling this from is the Scooser Winter Series in Homestead. I don't really have much video yet of me in the Cosmic Cart, um, but once I get some more video, I'll try and post more, some more stuff of that, some more racing critiques and everything. But right now I have this video from the um, AMR Karting Complex. Um, basically, we're just gonna go through like three corners. Um, really, there's only three hard braking zones on this track. Um, so yeah, let's let's just play the video through and just kind of focus on my left foot and focus on you know where I'm hitting the brakes, how hard I'm initially hitting the brakes, and where I'm lifting off of the brakes. <laughs> Now that you've seen it, let's go through each corner just kind of in slow motion so that you get a better understanding of what's going on. So as I'm entering the corner, you can see I'm applying the brake maximum pressure. There's a bit of lockup, but I'm going straight to the maximum pressure possible, 100% initial hit on the brakes. As I start to head into the corner, backing off the brakes just a hair. I'm probably backing off to 95%. You don't need that lock up all the way into the corner. If you're locking up, it's just like pulling the e-brake in your car. The back end is just going to start dancing all over the place and you're not going to be consistent and straight entering the corner. So you want to hit it as hard as you can, 100% initially. Immediately after that, you're backing it off to 95, just in that area to keep it from dancing around on you as you enter the corner. As I'm entering the corner, you can see right before I get to the apex, my foot backs off the brake. I carry the brake all the way to the apex of the corner in almost every corner. By doing that, it allows me to modulate the speed that I'm entering the corner at. Every time you go into the braking zone, it's going to be different. You're not ever hitting the brakes at the same exact spot every single lap. So when you carry the brake into the corner, it allows you to modulate the speed. Let's say you go in a bit too deep. Now all you have to do is just keep applying more pressure as you enter into the apex. If you're carrying not enough speed, you can get off the brake earlier and you can still roll that same amount of speed. This really helps me with consistency um, because it allows me just to have that flexibility and you know there's those errors that you can't really prevent. So it allows you to have that flexibility so that you don't blow the corner every other lap. Come off 
that corner, entering into turn two. Again, brake all the way to the point where I get to the curb. Now I'm off the brake, roll over the curb, back on the throttle. It's that same thing. You want to carry the brake in, roll onto it, stay onto it the, all the way up to the apex so you can modulate that speed and it keeps you consistent so that every time I'm coming through there, I'm coming through at the same speed. Again, hard brake initially. You can see there's a bit of a lockup. On the brakes, all the way to the apex, off the brakes, back on the throttle. Every time I enter the corner, it's the same thing. Initially, 100%, backing off as I'm getting to the apex. Once I get to the apex, I'm off completely. Roll for a split second, back on the gas. There's not that much time that I spend coasting in the middle of the corner. Um, a lot of the time is brake, and as I'm getting off of the brake, my foot's already getting ready to get started on the gas, and then there's just a split second where I'm off both, and then I'm back on the gas again. So now heading into five, we have the same thing. So hard braking initially, little lockup, brake, 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 turn, off the brake, back to the throne. You can see in that corner, it's a bit more exaggerated than the other ones, um, but you can see I'm braking, I'm even turning before I'm off the brake. I'm carrying the brake that long into the corner. Um, that just really allows me to, again, to have that consistency through the corner. I'm not going to be inconsistent in the braking zone because I'm going to be hitting my marks every single time. If I go in a bit too deep, all I got to do, stay on it just a bit more, and then it allows the cart just to stay underneath me. You can modulate that brake. You never really have to worry about um, ever over braking or under braking. You just have to get in that area for the braking zone and then you just modulate it from there. And it allows you just to stay consistent. You can play with it. As the track changes, you know you're never really caught out. Um, if you go out and the track's completely different, you can brake in the same spot for a race and then you really just modulate it in the braking zone. You don't really have to play with any inconsistencies. So another reason why I carry the brake into the center of the corner is efficiency. So as soon as you get off the throttle and you hit the brakes 100% and you back it off to 95, that takes all the weight from the rear of the go-kart and pushes it to the front of the cart. So you're basically getting a big weight transfer to the front of the go-kart. So when you brake that hard and you get the weight on the nose of the go-kart, you want to modulate that and keep it as you enter the corner because that allows the weight to transfer to the front of the go-kart, you have more front grip, and then the chassis starts to flex as well. So you brake and you get all the weight on the nose, carry that all the way to the apex, and then it keeps the tire up in the rear, and then you have much more grip entering the corner. And it allows you just to have more confidence with the go-kart. If you drive and you can consistently get the rear tire to lift, and you can consistently get the chassis to, to rotate the way you're wanting it to, the feedback you can give to your mechanic is better. Um, if you're just more consistent with your brakes and you're doing it properly, the feedback is always going to be better and then obviously you can go faster from there. Braking efficiency and consistency are the two biggest things. Um, I'm not going to go into too much detail about this. This is more of something that um, when you're on the track um, with Rollison Performance Group or with me as your coach, you'd get a more in-detailed look at you know exactly what you're doing wrong and ways to improve it. This is just kind of a general idea of ways to improve your braking. If you want more of this kind of advice and you want to learn more about chassis setup and you just want help at the track, um, contact Mike Rollison with Rollison Performance Group or contact me and I'll put you in touch with Mike and we can work something out to where you come down the track. We're doing a ton of test days before every major event um, and we also have training days for the team. So that's the video you guys. Again, I'm hoping to post some more. I got behind, so I'm, I'm really trying to post more and post some more content of just race reviews. I obviously got to build that up. So in the next couple races, I'll get some more content, and then hopefully I'll be able to post it. Help you guys out some more. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram and Facebook, um, and then also to subscribe. Comment any questions you have. Um, direct message me if you um, have any other questions, and I'll try and answer all of them. I'm actually pretty good on Instagram, so if you DM me on Instagram, I normally respond pretty fast. YouTube is a bit more difficult because I don't really get the notifications for it. But if you DM me on Instagram, yeah, I'm more than likely to answer. Remember to like this video. And yeah, keep tuning in for more videos. Hoping to post more. See you guys later.